What's up, everybody? This episode of the Smoking Tire Podcast is brought to you by Manscaped. Listen, cuts on your face when you're shaving are bad enough, right? But cuts on your nuts, bro. If you are shaving your testicular area and you cut yourself down there, you're suffering for like a week. It's super, super terrible. I've been there. You've been there. The difference is one of us is comfortable talking about it into a microphone. The Manscaped Lawnmower 3.0 has been beautifully designed to reduce those painful nicks and tugs. This is their third generation trimmer over at Manscaped, featuring advanced skin safe technology so you keep your bad boys nice and smooth. The Manscaped engineering team obsesses over technology developments to provide you the best tools for your grooming experience and they spent 18 months perfecting the greatest ball hair trimmer ever created. They just released the new and improved Lawnmower 3.0 trimmer. When I tell you this is premium, I mean premium. The battery lasts up to 90 minutes so you can take a nice long shave, multiple shaves even. The waterproof technology allows you to use it in the shower. It's got an LED light, like a headlight. Listen, you wouldn't want to go driving around at night without a headlight, would you? Do you want to clutch your balls without a headlight? I don't think you do. And let's not forget about the charge stand. Show your mower off loud and proud because this intelligently designed stand is a convenient USB charging dock. So many people have written in stories about how the lawnmower 3.0 trimmer has changed their lives. They even included pics so I could see the smoothness for myself, and they aren't kidding. Okay, that one I read off the sheet. I didn't look at any ball picks. I'm just going to take their word for it, and you should take my word for it. Get 20% off free shipping with code TIRE at manscaped.com. That's M-A-N-S-C-A-P-E-D.com. Manscaped.com. And get 20% off and free shipping with code TIRE. Code TIRE. Manscaped.com. Code TIRE. 20% off and free shipping. Guys, how about... Privacy, private internet access, right? This is the theme of the ad is privacy. With private internet access, all your internet traffic goes through a secure VPN tunnel. Your IP address is hidden and your data is encrypted, right? You can use private internet access to protect the data on your phone, keep away snoopers, keep advertisers from following you around the internet. You can watch geo-restricted content on streaming services anywhere in the world that would be previously unavailable to you. Private internet access is available on all platforms, including iOS and Android. There's over 2,600 VPN servers in 47 countries, and private internet access has a strict no-log policy in place. They mean it. You can use one subscription to protect up to 10 devices at the same time. There's a 30-day 30 mo- 30 money-back guarantee, and here are the details. By using our link, you can get the complete digital privacy of private internet access for less than $3 a month and get three extra months for free. Go to privateinternetaccess.com slash tire. That's privateinternetaccess.com slash tire and get uh, private internet access for three less than $3 a month and three extra months for free. Privateinternetaccess.com slash tire. Higher. All right, how about Ritual? They sent me the vitamins. They are good. Here's the thing about Ritual, right? Men's diets are falling behind. Men, we're stubborn. We think we can eat like crap, and we think we can out-exercise it. It, it. The truth is... We can't. And I work out seven days a week, and I can't out-exercise my age. I just can't do it. 70% of men don't get enough vitamin E, and 97% of men don't get enough vitamin D from their diet. But fundamentally, a lot of men overvalue exercise and undervalue nutrition and may think that if I look healthy, I am healthy. But there's more to health than meets the eye. So Ritual is introducing Essential for Men, the obsessively researched multivitamin that's formulated to help fill nutrition nutritional gaps in men's diets. Man, Ritual is created by women. It was started as a women's sort of prenatal product, but they have evolved into creating this multivitamin just for men. It's the new type of two-a-day from helping support heart health, normal muscle function, and normal immune function. This tiny step can have a big impact. The vegan-friendly, non-GMO, sugar-free, gluten-free, and allergen-free multivitamins are traceable because where it's from is just as important 
important as what it's for. The Ritual always delivers. The subscription-based supplement is easy to start and easy to snooze. It's only about a dollar a day to have essential nutrients delivered to your door. Step up your nutrient game with Essential for Men from Ritual. 10% off your first three months at ritual.com slash TST and start your ritual today. That's 10% off during your first three months with ritual.com slash TST. Lastly, but not leastly, have you heard of Liquid IV? This is a new thing, and it is going to be really interesting. I have to drink a crazy amount of water throughout the day. I carry my own water bottle, and I, I just put a reverse osmosis system in my house so I don't have to use filters in the fridge anymore. Straight out the tap, folks. But believe it or not, dehydration occurs daily in three out of four people. With Liquid IV, you have the fastest, most efficient way to stay hydrated. Each serving helps you get as much hydration as two to three bottles of water. Proper hydration is crucial for your immune system and can boost your immunity. With Liquid IV, you have the fastest, most efficient way to stay hydrated. It's packed with potassium, vitamin C, and other vitamins known to help your body defend against infections. One serving of Liquid IV provides the same hydration as drinking two to three bottles of water alone. There's five essential vitamins and more vitamin C than an orange with as much potassium as a banana. It's healthier than sugary sports drinks. There's no artificial flavors or preservatives and less sugar than an apple. It's non-GMO, freegan, freegan, <laughs> vegan, and free of gluten, dairy, and soy. The optimal ratio of glucose, sodium, and potassium delivers water and nutrients directly into the bloodstream, and it's a perfect balance to help you hydrate more quickly, quickly and effectively than water alone. Liquid IV is donating 3.7 million servings to uh, hungry people around the world and hospitals in response to COVID-19. They're giving it to first responders, food banks, veterans, active military, and hospital. But you can get it at Costco and Target nationwide. Look for Liquid IV in stores at Costco and Target or get 25% off when you go to liquidiv.com and use code TST at checkout. That's 25% off at liquidiv.com with code TST at checkout. Get better hydration today at liquidiv.com slash uh, TST, promo code TST at checkout. We just, we'll, just, we'll just dive right in. Tanner Faust. Cheers. Welcome yeah, in. see you, brother. Cheers, man. <laughs> Skull. Mm. Where are you at? Are you at home? Are you at the home office right now? I am an, I'm at home. I'm in a, an office that I never go to. This is like the, my least <laughs> visited room. And it, it's an absolute mess, but is this the office that you built where you can see your uh, Porsche through the window? Yeah, it's not as nice as I can see your office view. It's well, pretty you can, sweet. You I've can got, see my Porsche through the window. <laughs> <laughs> oh really? Oh yeah. Ah, this is this is how this is. Oh no. Can you see this? Oh yeah, yeah. You dev Tanner's got a great view into his garage what? there. Yeah, that looks awesome. That's really cool. Is that your? Is it a there? 912? Right. Wow. Yeah. Oh, but you got the quality. rack of suits, though. You've got like the oh, victory yeah. wall of rock star uh, racing s suits, and then the trophies going on. How does he get in the yeah, car? It turned into a shrine. It wasn't <laughs> supposed to be that way. <laughs> and then you went out and won all those trophies. You were just going to be an average driver with a cool garage, and then you had you had to put all those trophies somewhere. <laughs> well, it, it was it was the it was supposed to be a parking spot. That was the idea, and then. You know, uh, architect. You, you know, Chrissy. Have you ever met Chrissy Beavis? No, but she's a rally great... co-driver. Oh, organized... I knew the name from the side of a rally car. Yeah, but I don't believe I've yes. ever met her. Yeah. Yeah. So she designed my house. She's an architect, and so it, that was a parking spot. But she she went over and above for sure. It kind of looked like you have so many trophies that you have to climb in the window of the car. Actually, <laughs> it looks like it's a struggle to get in the car. <laughs> You know, you need, it's a two person job because you got to have somebody to push the button to take you up the lift, you know? I oh, mean, wait. Actually, if you're going to, yeah. Are you, is so, the car, is the car underground or what, where does the lift put the car? It puts it in the second floor. Uh huh. But you can only get there from the garage. So if you want to get to the trophies, you have to get somebody to give you a ride on the lift. Oh. Up there. I so have. If you want to, <laughs> like, polish them off, yeah. take selfies with them, you know. 
all the stuff that you do. But do you see the problem with the lift is that people got to trust you that you're not just going to strand them up there. I keep telling people, I'm like, you guys want to go up the lift? It's really fun. They're like, how do we get down? They're like, oh, I'll just Please. let you back down. They're like, fuck yeah, yeah. out of here. Right here. I'm just <laughs> going to push this button. Yeah, no, it's it's committal. You're right. And it's hot. You get up there, it's hot. In your warehouse, I bet it's hot up high. Uh, probably up high. It probably is. Yeah, yeah. yeah. In the studio, yeah. it's it's lovely. Yeah. Oh, he, oh, we got a picture up. Zach's got a picture up of the lift. Oh, dude. That's pretty awesome. And you have a really cool uh, garage cabinet wall on the ground floor. Yeah, the a pack of guys came out and did that cabinet. Ben Pack arranged the lift. It was um That's it was so a good deal. Cool. So out here where I live, the lots are like like when we tore the house down, the sandbox looked like a like a very small children's sandbox. <laughs> that was the whole lot. Every lot is super skinny. They're, you know, it, it land is a bit of a premium and so maximizing the space the lift was you know critical once the, when the lift is up can is. you get something underneath it yeah but oh, it's 12 feet so you can uh i put bikes hang a bunch of bikes under there cool there's fishing poles there's a boxing bag there's a there's a heavy bag there what, what's in but the upper uh, cabinets and how do you get to them <laughs> you gotta go up the lift <laughs> You got to get a ride. Yeah. <laughs> it's like a little, it's like a slow motion amusement ride. And there, uh, you just cannot leave the doors open, which I've done a couple times. Oh, the lift and break, break oh <laughs> no. Have you really? Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. That's, oh, yeah. that's bad. Yeah. yeah. It's a learning curve for sure. And there's, you know, it, there's Christmas decorations and Halloween, you know how it, you get the stuff that gets packed away. There's paint somewhere for like touch up paint. <laughs> yeah. And, um, but that's, uh, yeah, the lift has added a dimension to the house, though. Yeah, no, it's very cool. And what's the story so, on the 912 again? Was it your dad's? This was a car that I my dad bought when I was three. And in 1976, that's how freaking old I am. It's unbelievable. Yeah, but like if and, you put if you stand next to me, dude, most people would still bet you're like 10 years younger than me. You win, nah. you just you beat life so hard in that in that youth department. Nah. You age like know. really well. Well, the well thank you but the uh the nine, <laughs> no to say that but yeah the 912 my dad bought when i was three he it was right when my parents got divorced and so whenever i went to, i visited him for the summers i stayed in summers at his house in denver and this was the car i grew up with in the garage it was the fastest car ever made you know i had the the coontosh uh this you know probably the same coontosh you had on your wall which color and, did you which uh, color had, uh poster you know, was, did you have the red okay, one or the white or the different. black it was white and grass, I, it, which I don't know if you had that one. I did not have the grass. I had a, yeah, I yeah, had the you, white with just, it was just on black, and it was the right. Alpine poster. It was the, you know. You the Alpine stereo poster. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. I remember that one. Now, mine mine was like a centerfold. I, like, pulled out of a magazine or something. It's like. Some guy just took uh, it in front of him from a ladder, you know. <laughs> like, yeah, just, yeah. it's just some, some dude's backyard. Yeah. That's so funny, yeah. But it was, uh. But a 912 in Denver, though, that's like you're experiencing some power loss at that altitude in a 912. Oh, not only is it probably the slowest Porsche ever made, it's it's then you're at a mile high. Yeah, <laughs> no, it was very, very slow. And but I thought it was, you know, the greatest thing ever. I, I finally bought it from him uh, maybe 15 years ago uh, before my little brother destroyed it. And it was just it was just kind of the car like this was the car that got me into cars. You have that. You know, every car yeah. person that I've ever met has that story of the car that got him into cars. And if you're lucky, you remember what it smells like or what it sounds like. But but if you're really lucky, you actually get to hold on, you know, get it. Yeah. And keep it. Yeah. If and it was a family member's like car and you get to then yeah. take it or buy it or inherit it or whatever, then it becomes very, very special. Yeah. yeah and you make your whole garage. Like, when I go into my garage, it literally oh. reminds me of being a 10 year old because it's. Oh no! Did Tanner get lost? I think Tanner. We, did we I bounce? Think, I think his. Oh internet, no! I think his internet died. Tanner's internet took a poo. It went. Oh, no. It went to audio only, which is never a good sign. That's not a good sign. No, he. I hope he'll call us back. <laughs> That's not good. Can we have out for those of us in the uh, in the video room? How about our new Kirai uh, paneling in the studio, which looks amazing. It does. It looks really. Jay good. was over here nailing it up, and I don't know if you can see it. Check that out, people. Can you can you use me as a look yeah, at I gotcha. that? So that's a triple layered um, Ferrari gated shifter, and it's really cool. It's really, really cool. cool. Yeah, I literally. Oh, Tanner's coming back. Hold are on. you? Have you? Are, that, you 
Are you? Is it important to leave that car as close to when you were three as possible, or have you considered being like, all right, let me let me take this thing over to Benton and let's get let's get a little horsepower going, or is it just just leave it? Honestly, horsepower wise, I'm fine with upgrading it. It's appearance, <laughs> paint wise, and um, you know, I left the interior mostly there, and the uh, you know got the same sheepskin. It, this that could be gross, actually. It's got the same sheep. It's skin got the sheepskin. Wow. Oh yeah. Oh dude. Yeah, from, from the 70s, the whole thing is full 70s. When it's was got it? the same? Okay. When were they taken off the though? <laughs> when were the sheepskin covers last off those seats? I had the seats reupholstered and then the sheepskin put back on again. That was probably <laughs> eight years ago. <laughs> you know, there's a lot. You don't want a forensic scientist going through there. That's for sure. But no, did you do that you bit? Know. Did you do that bit on Top Gear once where they had the forensic guys yes. go through? It, it's gnarly. It's horrible. <laughs> what did they find no, in your car be- that you had to get back into afterwards? <laughs> I do remember for the show, we had to abbreviate everything as pools of fluid. But it, they were so specific. It was like semen. It was all, every kind of fluid you could imagine, and it and it identified exactly which spot was that pool. Yeah. Oh, no. What was the yeah. most? Have you ever in, done that? Have interesting you ever had a place. Si- no. Like read I, a car forensic. No, I really. I think we should though. I think we should like get a random rental car though and just do it. And just be like, how nasty is this? Like, even a rental Dude, car, it's like car. less than less than five thousand miles. Like a new, like a new rental car. I bet it would be horrible. A- ask Tanner because I can't remember what the um, strangest you know, place could, was. Like, Tanner, what in Zach, the, in the car. I, because you're on this mic and Zach's over there. Zach wants to know what is the strangest place to have yeah, found a Zachary. pool. Oh, he can't. Okay. <laughs> Do you have? A, <laughs> you get me? That was a great what, diss. If it was intentional. What was the strangest place you found a pool? <laughs> Of fluid uh, of anything yeah. like yeah. The roof. like was there semen on the windshield? That's what he wants to know. Like or was I think there I think there was there was pools of fluid on the dashboard that mm-hmm. had literally been able to be extracted out of the foam. <laughs> wow! There was obviously, every seat mm-hmm. and you know this is a I think we're onto something honestly because you could offer this service when cars get checked in to your garage oh, they get no. a little forensic a little forensic <laughs> inspection you'd be selling the shit out You're of the detail yeah, they I'm come in and it's just like a guy in a hazmat suit rolls up with a wand and like, nice and to meet you welcome just pull it on in you know who would yeah. buy that Why the wives of the guys that store their cars here oh. uh, my friend <laughs> yeah. my friend Larry uh, made a detail you know he's like an amazing detailer and he made this video that was like how to disinfect your car during a pandemic right and it was he said it was the most the most shares versus the least watches. Like, everyone was like, guys, you got to see this. But no one actually watched it. Nobody wanted to watch yeah, it. Yeah, because your car is disgusting. <laughs> you need to see this. Is everybody calling each other out having <laughs> shitty looking cars. Yeah. <laughs> what was that? What, what was the car that was covered in pools of unknown fluid from Top Gear? Do you remember? My God, I don't even remember what my car was. I remember, let's see, Adam had a Mercedes 190 that... <clears throat> got destroyed in a later show. As you do. Um, yeah, I don't even remember what mine was. I, I was. I, I'll, I'll be honest. I'm a bit of a germaphobe anyway. <laughs> and the whole th- I like have traumatic amnesia about that whole experience because it was so gnarly. And and they sort of like the producers would. And I'm sure this happens on the shows that you've done where they kind of pick on the hosts. So it, that was my turn for them to kind of get back at me for some travel that I messed up or a flight I was late to or something. And uh, not that it was vindictive or anything, but it was just a fun little jab. Guess what now? <laughs> this is happening. We're going to take a look in your cars and we're going to make you drive these $500 cars 500 miles and then you're going to have to sit in pools of semen for 500 miles of... And by the way, it's going to be August. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> did, you go ha- did you go hazmat suit? I think. Yeah, I, think I wore a full hazmat suit. I think you did. I you're think I remember straight. that bit. Oh, you're damn straight I did. Are you kidding me? <laughs> yeah, I think I remember you going, oh, there it is. You were in a BMW, uh, oh, no, the BBC did uh, three E30s on the BBC one. Okay. They had yep. three, they all bought identical E30s, and they did the hat, the thing, and there was many fluids on that one. But, yeah, yeah, yeah. I got a picture of you in a hazmat suit as well. <laughs> 
Yeah, Relage wore some sort of a alligator, <laughs> full body alligator suit. <laughs> yeah, like a Three ghillie ridiculous. suit or something, right? Yeah, it's, that's you awesome. Know, that's, it's good stuff. Those, it would be those, uh, those kind, kind of, of fucked up if, if you did that with your dad's car and they. <laughs> <laughs> my dad would be like hey don't go in the back seat son Whatever. oh god <laughs> wow it took Zach a second to get grossed out by that they're gonna find I'll find Tanner's genetic material like oh you're, this is where you're made yeah. this is your clone hey, there's a little bit of you in there yeah. that's right that's terrible Half, anyway yeah what's in the uh, what else is in the in the in the uh, the Casa de Faust garage these days car wise yeah well um, I have uh, I've got a GT3 Oh, that the is, best. Uh, a, it's a car that I did drive in a show and fell in love with and tracked one down and got it. And then, and that's a, a 991. It's not the manual, which I, it was a year before that came out. Um, Still a very good car. The, it's an amazing car. Uh, I've got a Golf R, which I'm a spokesperson for, oh, for yeah. the R group. Yeah. And that's uh, an, an amazing little piece of Volkswagen where they, they, they kind of have some mad scientists and come up with some cool stuff. Have they the did they update the Golf R for for what you've Golf got? Eight. Yeah, when is that one coming out? Do you know? Soon? Uh, I don't know if it's going to be. I think it's next year. I think that's the the idea. I don't know the exact date. Things have kind of all changed a bit. Golf R's are very good. You can put like three parts on a Golf R and it m fucking mobs. They're so fast with like intercooler tune exhaust. There are so many. Oh. So many mods. There are so many 600 horsepower golf bars out there. Mm -hmm. Like it's it's staggering. We used to do this thing called R's and coffee, and the uh, I know very clever. The pirates. The, a, uh, <laughs> it's, a, it's a pirate party, Zach. It was a lot of pirates showed up. It was weird. I was wondering why the pirates kept showing. Up. SEO yeah, because your SEO was very good. <laughs> yeah. So it was. Uh, and yeah, these guys have five, six hundred horsepower, and they daily drive these monsters. It's pretty, pretty awesome. Uh, you ever, do you ever fuck with one of them crazy HPA ones from Canada? Mm -hmm. You know them guys. Mm -hmm. I drove a Golf R that they put a twin turbo VR6 motor in with a TTRS all-wheel drive system and gearbox, and it was uh, wow. seven hundred and forty horsepower, and it ran nines, and it was, qu oh, dude, quiet. It was quiet as a mouse, and other than a wow. set of like HRE flow form wheels, you just wouldn't you wouldn't know anything. And then you just you hit the guys with it would like almost do wheelies. It was so crazy. Seven hundred horsepower, is insane. Zach's got a picture up of the engine, car. which is actually quite pretty. It's it's got turbo plumbing all over the place. But those guys at HPA in Canada do like really really nutty stuff with Volkswagens. I drove a six hundred horsepower awesome. all wheel drive Eos they built. It was so cool. What? <laughs> yeah, it was so <laughs> gnarly. <laughs> You've gotten to drive some pretty funky things. I will yeah. say that. And Canadians especially, you know what Canadians, it really goes well with their personality. They love sleepers. Canadians are all yeah. about sleepers. So the dude I think who built the, who paid for, or, or commissioned, excuse me, the, the 740 yeah. horsepower Golf R, I think he was like a foreman on a construction site and his neighbor or something had like a GTR and he wanted to be able to like beat his GTR at the, dra the, GTR at the drag strip, but he didn't want anyone at the construction site to know that he had this this crazy car so he would just that's drive this amazing. thing to work and it, everyone just thought it was a golf <laughs> that's like amazing nuts it was so cool that is badass yeah i i so i've enjoyed the r relationship and you know i do like how people tune volkswagens like they're usually pretty clean especially newer ones like you said you look it's like a work of art almost the carbon and everything and like when i had a you know my first car that i ever worked on was a um, Mitsubishi Eclipse. It was actually Eagle Talon. Yes, yeah. Eagle Talon TSI. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Dark. Did it have blue. power seat belts? That's really. Was it of those years where it had the power seat belts? Um, it did not have the power seat belt. You consider yourself lucky, sir. Yeah, I read the power seatbelt though. The thing was to disconnect it and then just hook it up every time, mm -hmm. right? Because you get choked by that thing. <laughs> it's like a tech you track. do it. The, it's it's everyone. You're doing. It's the opposite way of doing your seatbelt. You can pull your shoulder yeah. out like that. Yeah, yeah, no. It's you had some people though. got ho so hosed. Some people bought Ferrari F40s with power seatbelts in them, and they still to this day, for originality, are forced oh. to leave that shit. Yeah, that was the worst <laughs> era. That really was a bad idea. The power seatbelt yeah, era, that, yeah. 
They meant yeah, well, but, but things, it's... <laughs> yeah, but those car, I think it was like a 4G 6.3 or something, those motors, everybody tweaked the hell out of these motors. And I, I replaced the turbo and did some work to it. And it looked like Christmas when you started it up, every color on the dash, <laughs> the TPS this and the turbo timer that. And it was like the beep, boop, boop, HKS noises when you shut the car down and everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. You and turn the key off and so walk clean. away and they're like, hey, your car is still running. You're like, I know, bro. It's good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and inside it's like a disco party of lights going off. Yeah. No, now everything is so clean and tight. You see these guys have these monster beasts of cars, oh, yeah. but you can't even tell how how fast they are. Yeah, you know where you really get it is like like the AMG and like the Audi tuning yeah. guys. Like there's du- like uh, uh, Doug and Arnie who uh, who have the new Cannonball record. You see this story? They did 25 hours <laughs> cross country. They're in the 25s now, bro. It, these guys are out of wow. their minds. And uh, they had, you know, an E63. The newest car in the 25s was an Audi A8 that they, with vinyl and fun colored tape, re like made the grill to look like a Taurus police interceptor and they made all the lights look like Ford light like it's a these guys are geniuses with vinyl they made a wow. an, they made an, uh, a 900 horsepower AMS Alpha 9 um E63 right 900 horsepower E63 with a 60 gallon fuel cell with light with vinyl they made it look like a Honda Accord I swear to god they made the rear end the whole rear end of the car look just like a Honda Accord wow. by just taping over lights Zach has it pulled up dude the front of that Audi looks just like a fucking Taurus it's really really cool that's insane it's so such- the ideas that they that the when the police see it, they call out the wrong car. Exactly. If someone calls Good you Lord. in, they don't. They just don't know what the car is. And every car now, in between the, the the windshield and the rear window, looks exactly the same. So if you change the front clip and rear clip with some tape, like you can really make it look like a much different car. It's incredible. It's great. I went to this event in Nebraska where I drove a Mercedes. They called it a minivan, but and we did a standing mile, 165 and a half. Was it a now. R63 or something? Yeah. Yeah. It was uh, the Wise Tech Engineering. It was uh, Cam Douglas. Oh, Cam's car. Oh, yeah. Yes. Cam from Optima's car. That thing yes. rules. That's a clean it was build. Sweet. That's it a was clean super build. Sweet. What did it do in the standing yeah. mile? 165? 165 and a half, yeah. Okay, so for comparison, I took a 2010 Corvette ZR1 to the standing mile, and I ran 175, but I did like, I, so it's that's pretty good for a mini, mini It's fan. pretty good. And yeah. the, what was your half mile, do you remember? No, 130-something, 140-something maybe. I don't really, I don't See, really, me- no, one- I don't really remember. This was 153 and a half miles. Oh, that's so moving. It yeah. Just yeah. So it's got power. It just flattens out aero. Mm-hmm. You know, once you get up because to speed it's a van. Because <laughs> because ultimately it's a van. It's a van, and it was on a public road. It was just a, a public road in Nebraska. They shut down. I mean, there's all these smooth, incredibly straight roads between the fields, and then there's one bumpy road, and that's the one you do it on. <laughs> but they literally set up bleachers in a guy's cornfield. And just run it. Oh, the, is this is this part of Sand Hills? Is part of the Sand yes, Hills challenge? Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Sort of. And the guy behind me did two thirty in a Lamborghini. Oh, and like a, a turbo, model. yeah, turbo Lamborghini. Yeah, yeah. yeah Some yeah. of them guys, dude. I, I had to, I had to tap out of that shit, dude. Some of those guys are out of their minds. I had a it couple is, offers to do insane. like two twenty something, in the, and I'm like, nah, I don't know about that. It's weird. It's a long. I did two twenty five in that one to one that Koenigsegg. Oh yeah. And it was like a, but though when you get to cars like that, it's like a no brainer. Koenigsegg. Tell me about your Koenigsegg yeah. experience. Did it live up to your expectations I've, of Koenigsegg? I have driven three. Uh, two are great. I think the CCX. Is it the CCXR? Is that uh, what it's manual called? transmission, but with a wing and manual very light. With the, yeah, with the kind of mm-hmm. yeah, with the doors that swivel up. That was a great car. I thought that was uh, a great car. It was a good balance of like, you know, nimble and fun and everything a supercar should be and also super fast. Then the the one-to-one was a step up and everything. It was it was very fast, but it still was pretty nimble and everything. But I drove the, uh, I'm gonna butcher this. It was in Need for Speed, the Agera. Ag- Agera, yes. Agera, yes. and um, that one was built basically for top speed. 
And uh, that one I drove in the movie, I drove replicas of that car. Um, you know, the good guy drove those things around the red, red one. Oh yeah. But they had, <laughs> in, uh, it was in need for speed. The movie need for speed. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Need yeah. for speed. Yeah, yeah. And they had, uh, they had a real one on set though. So driving the real one. It, yeah. I, I'm not, I'm never really come away from those cars that are built for one thing, just like top speed, never come away with, you know, a really good feeling from those. Mm -hmm. Um, but but yeah, the ones so you're I talking thought, about that, that you liked seem to have the big wings for the downforce and stability and that kind of stuff. Yeah, they're more about turning. Yeah, you know, they're more about like being a supercar. So, what about you? Which one did you drive? Or which I one? drove the Agera R, and I yeah. only drove it on um, a runway, and I drove it on the, on the street a little bit. But the runway in, in Sweden, where you where you do those things, and and it was it was really really wild. It was very you know he had me do the thing that I guess they have everybody do, which is they go he goes take it up to two hundred miles an hour, hit take, the brake, take your hands off the wheel and right, hit the brakes, hits, and it holds right. it stays in a straight line, oh, and that's, that's like what I said, but he <laughs> I did it. I figured he knew what he was talking about. I did that yeah, shit, I and I was it was terrifying, but the car stayed a straight line. I just went. Um, what just, what, how did it just do that? Yeah. Like, yeah. what the fuck? But like, you also, it's funny that you, uh, that like, cause you've done some really sketchy stuff in car, like you've done like loops and huge jumps and like all kind of crazy stuff. But is that, when you approach that stuff as a sci as a science more than a driving art does that make it feel a little more chill like a little safer than purely like testing cars to their limit this you broke up for a second the stunt stuff yeah the stunt stuff where it's a the loop or a yeah. huge jump does the math of it make it seem a little more safer and predictable yeah you don't you never get out and like look and and like size it up and and try to get a feel for <laughs> what do i need to do to jump this gap uh -uh. you look at the number on the page and you, you say, I just want the best looking screen I can possibly find that so I can see, I'm gonna match this number with the one that this 22 year old pimply faced engineer over here said to go. And I'm gonna match it with that speed and then hope you guys are right. Yeah. <laughs> that's the only way you can mentally, for me, that's the only way I can mentally get my head around that stuff. Cause when I stand on the end of the jump, like for the jump one, when we were at uh, the Indy 500, I walked up to the end of the jump to like take a picture or do something that was there. And I looked at the gap and I was like, never, never gonna do that again. Just, why would you ever look at that? It's, it looks, it looks like huge. such a bad idea. Yeah. yeah, now I know why everybody's been saying, oh my gosh, you're crazy, this is a bad idea. Yeah. That's, what, that's what they see is that gap. But yeah. You just think about the science, 100%. Think about the science. And I was an engineer for a hot minute before I you know, skied a lot and then went back into the language arts program and graduated with a college degree. <laughs> but he, so, <laughs> but I remember it was, uh, you know, it. so I believe the numbers and, you know, you just, yeah, you kind of have to trust. Do you, the check, their, do you check their math ever? Um, I, in, the, in practice. So like uh, with the jump, it was, it was good because we practiced 50 jumps. We did, we broke the world record 10 times. And we you broke the world jump. record ten times. Would you just keep backing it up five feet every every time and keep doing it? We just kept. Uh, well, for one, the yeah, the ramp was on uh, train tracks, kind of a thing, so you could back the ramp up. Uh huh. And then they would just you just up the mile an hour by three every three miles an hour or every one mile an hour was seven feet. That makes sense. So were you every, oh so every, you were going off a jump and flat landing it? Get the fuck out of no, here! On the, oh no, a big giant ramp. Oh, okay. Big so you ramp. had you had a, a long, long landing yeah. to work with. Okay. All right. Yes. Yeah. And every, <laughs> a huge. It was a huge landing, and every so every mile an hour was seven feet. So we ended up settling on a hundred and seven miles an hour as being kind of our sweet spot where we would get pretty close to the bottom of the ramp. Uh huh. Um, without risking a flat landing, if there was like a tailwind or something. Yeah, yeah. When, dude, but you you watch like stadium super trucks and shit. These guys are going off these jumps in the middle of these circuits and then flat landing like multiple times a lap. Have you had a go at any of that stuff? It seems like their spines got to get crushed. I did the Lucas trucks, mm -hmm. and their tracks are more designed like a super cross track where you get a nice downhill landing on the table. Yeah, it's a nice stuff. flow. It's it's a, it's, a, it's beautiful. 
Yeah, they're gorgeous. But the stadium trucks, they yeah, th those look like backbreakers. And and it's and it's just a, a metal ramp. And the monster trucks. If you do you remember when monster trucks would jump and then just break? Like that was their thing. Like they would jump and then stop on the, on the landing, yeah. like yeah, like land at full break. Good douche. <laughs> yeah. yeah, like I, axles will break. Now they're like remote control cars. Actually, remote control cars used to break too. <laughs> now you can jump them over a freaking house. But the monster trucks are like fifty feet in the air and just bouncing on the landing and continuing on. Yeah, I went to a Monster Jam event last year. It was so interesting to see in person. I had never been before. And it was really, really interesting. And they would they would just send this thing off. It really seemed like any hill. Like, it didn't really matter what was in front of it. They'd just point it at something and go flat and just fly until whenever, really. Yeah. <laughs> and just kind of land ever, and tumble. And maybe they were upside down. Maybe they were right side up. It didn't really seem to matter much. <laughs> no. Any desire to drive one of those? Yes. Lots. <laughs> Monster Lots. Jam University. Lots. Yeah, school. you heard about the, you know, Monster Jam University. They trained you. It's a thing. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, North Carolina or something. It's like Ill it's Illinois. Still Illinois. Yeah. Zach went. Yeah. Zach went for, and you know, Mike Spinelli. Have you met Spinelli before? Yes. Yes. He rolled the fuck out of a monster yeah. truck at Monster Jam University. <laughs> Well, I was I was supposed to yeah. drive it for that bit, and I was worried about my back because I had a herniated oh, yeah. disc. And to you know, on, on line with what Tanner's saying, I'm really glad I didn't because I watched Mike do it and like break himself. Yeah, if it seems like you could get hurt, but it also seems like they get out after some things that would really look hard. Like they must have a crazy suspension seat. Nope. I what? No? I don't know. Zach says no on the no, suspension seat. They have seal. huge balloon tires, which help. The shocks are like three <laughs> feet long, but you are strapped in. Um, the harnesses have an actual ratchet on them. So you get in and they, they cinch your, your belts down, and then they ratchet strap like tighter and tighter before you go off jumps. So, so you you're just. Okay, you yeah, can't so move. they have the ratchet. Yeah, you're just yeah. cranked down on the ratchet. Did that? Did that? When I did that, did that help, Tanner? By the way, when Zach actually, talked, yeah, all right, yeah. we're still they, trying to figure do, out the tech of this. I'm sorry, it's, it's an art. They not do a that in the. Oh no, it's all good. It, they they do that in the, um, like the Lucas Off Road series too. You got the little ratchet, Dude. down there. The problem with those is I'm always wearing a Hans device, and so when I did the Lucas stuff, the suspension seat like would actually flex a little bit, uh -huh. which lets the belts come off the Hans. And you would just feel the Hans like pop. Oh out. no! Uh -oh. The, the all, <laughs> <laughs> that's exactly my response in the microphone. Oh no! Oh no! And, I did this thing. <laughs> and your only chance to put it back in is in the air. So you jump, and then you'd be like, "Tuck the this thing fuck back out of here!" And then you guys, you just, go. that's awesome. You guys are crazy, man. That's Racing great. drivers are a whole other level. Your ability to put a Hans under a harness while flying through the air—I mean, that's amazing. Uh, the guys that do that series are gladiators. <laughs> yes. I'm just saying, like they, I mean, being able to do the tear offs alone was super hard. I had to cheat my first race and take my finger, like cut the fingers off the glove. Yeah. And jumping's the only time you can do that too. So they're like, they just go blind, like, woo, 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 and they feel the jump and they're like, okay, they're, yep. And, how many, how many tear offs do they stack? How many do you get on the thing? Like 10? Uh, uh, no, you can get more than that. It starts to get blurry probably after like 15 or 20. But okay. they, uh, it, you know, some of those guys will go through the first, cause you know, they muddy up the track and look, I, I did six races. I'm not an expert, but the, I did, they, they muddy up the track so that it won't get dusty by the end of the race. Yeah. Yeah. So the first two laps, I mean, you're literally the mud <laughs> falling off of your helmet onto your lap. It, you think that like a car part landed on your lap. It's kind of a freak. Yeah. It's thing. like Rocky. It's just cakes. It's just cakes, cakes of mud. And then it's it gets so heavy. It just drops <laughs> on your lap. Like, oh, and it's just like Suck. a chunk of mud. But those guys will go through a whole rack of tear off sometimes in the first two laps. And then the rest of the race, they're just, they're swiping just wiping and God. smearing. Oh, is that, is that the funnest? It, like, it's the, is that one of the funnest forms of racing? Cause it's just such loose surface plus jumps. Plus it like the trucks bump a little bit and they don't seem to get flagged for stuff. I mean, how, where does that rank in your motorsports experiences? I think it, I mean, it was, that is super fun. That was super fun. And, and it was fun because it was hard to learn what you don't realize. Did you ever do motocross riding? No, 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 no on both ends. 
Neither did I. And so, um, those guys, a lot of them come from motocross. What you don't realize is that every jump, just like every turn, has a slightly different shape. So you sometimes late apex it, sometimes get a middle turn apex. You know, you adjust to the different turns. Sometimes there's some grip on the inside. The jumps are the same way. Every single jump requires a slightly different amount of throttle, mm. or maybe even dragging the brake off the jump to keep the nose from flying up. So right. If you if you brake in the air, you can kind of you can dip the nose down, right? You can keep it down, yeah. but you have to take off with the right attitude. The braking in the air will only do so much. So if you go full throttle up a ramp, that carries the nose up. You can hit the brakes, but it's not going to pitch it down like a dirt bike. It just it pitches it down a little bit. Mm. But then the air will get underneath, and then you back flip. So what is yeah. the move? You to drag the brake up. So while your first wheels leave, the rear wheels are still braking a little bit that holds the nose down. Some some jumps, just at Lake Elsinore, one jump you had to drag the brake. Most of the jumps you had to stay full throttle all the way off the ramp, and then there was everything kind of in between. So and in, in those and those mo the motocross mentality is they learned that. They learn the jumps, you know, right away. Yeah. But that's so uh, that was a new thing for me. Like, oh, okay, so this one, you know, oh, I forgot to break on this jump, and then it just starts floating, lands on the back bumper, and you gather, you keep going. And <laughs> the most impressive like, thing about watching motocross is like they don't have speedometers, right? And they oh, know totally. when they yeah. when they hit a whoop, and it's like you're you're gonna fly three and then land exactly on that fourth. You know, just enough to get you on the, you know, oh, it's like their math that they're doing in, in real time. Oh, they, it's amazing. They feel it. And when we when we first started doing X Games stuff with Rallycross, which to answer the question, it's Rallycross, I think, is the best bang for the buck driving wise. But best for spectating as well. I'm super oh, pro Rallycross. Cool. Right on. The, when we first started doing those gap jumps, we would just, you know, nobody knew the speed. We can kind of have this little algorithm from when he did like a, a stunt show or stunt whatever, where he, uh, you know, if you went this fast, you jumped this far. But we would just send Pastrana out there. And Pastrana would get up <laughs> on his bike. And he just, he'd, 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 he'd roll by it one time. And then he'd just like, burr, burr, and he'd look, kind of look at it and then burr, and right off. And then you'd follow him. You follow right behind him and look at the speedometer and say, "Okay, it's forty-eight miles an hour." And then everybody, would, "Okay, it's forty-eight miles an hour." Oh my god! And that was it. Send Pastrana yeah. is the science. Was he, was he, um, <laughs> and it, he could he could have his helmet on backwards and he would jump it perfect every single time. Like it's just the feel that you're talking about is really really impressive. Wow, that's a like, that's that, being helmet. able to do that math is so amazing. You know what I mean? It's and and, and oh man. Oh, we're just looking. Zach has a bunch of rally cross pictures up right now. When do you get your electric rally cross car? It seems like everyone's getting their electric rally cross car now. When's yours? I mean, hopefully. Well, we've been talking about building a car for videos for like two years, but we so we have the car. It's just sort of stuck in Germany and COVID put oh. us uh, back a bit. But the rally cross car, I think, is next year. Mm -hmm. That's when uh, there'll be multiple series, including a Nitro World Games, will have some. Uh, Rallycross play um, with electric. You know, they've been kind of taking over Rallycross in the U.S. And it's going to be cool. This is, look, at some point, motorsport is, the world of motorsport goes around because the manufacturers are mm -hmm. involved. You know, because they're the ones selling the cars, right? So in order for a manufacturer to be interested in racing at any kind of significant level, it's got to involve electric technology. Yeah. So that's the that's the world we live in. I know, but I just like I want to see electric race cars doing things that highlight what is great about electric cars. And in yes. the case of motorsport, we're talking about Pikes Peak, we're talking about hill climbs, and we're talking about rallycross because yep. it's short it's burst those two stuff. It's there's not a lot more than that. And I think um, our friends at EV West are trying for Bonneville as well, which I think is an interesting, uh, you know, drag racing. Electric drag racing is like a no brainer at this point. You got yep. they got fucking cars running. You know, you buy a Taycan and run low 10, you know, sipping yeah. an espresso. Right. You know. <laughs> Have you had a go in one yet? Have you driven Tycon yet? No. I, I was at Sell MC where they did, they were sliding around on the ice, but I never got to drive one. Dude, 
Wait till you wait till you have a go. It's it's, it's a whole other fucking world of the, of, of craziness. I mean, I'm, I'm, in the awesome. canyons, up in the mountains, it's it's legitimately without giving away any too many pace notes. It's legitimately as fast as a 720s in the canyons. It's it's batshit. It's just it's batshit. And it weighs what? Fifty three hundred pounds. Fifteen hundred pounds more. Yeah. It's so crazy. It's just, it's like, I'm like, ah, this is the future and the future is okay. It's not so bad. Yeah, it's good. Wow. I've got, I've got one here. I've got one right there up on the top. We were testing weight. So I've got a Tycon, an ML63 and a Bentley Bentayga on the three fucking racks. That's that's awesome. It seems like you could have taken some concrete and put it in some (laughs) five gallon barrels. and then. But a Tycon, whatever, you know, tell however you choose to do it, I guess. They told but. me. They told me 6,000 pounds a tray. So I was like, all right, let's see. <laughs> <laughs> Look up on the MLS. What weighs 6,000 pounds? We're getting close. It's right, basically um, it's basically like a, ta- like a Tahoe, a long wheelbase Range Rover. That's about my size and weight limit. Yeah. All right on. It's all right. No, that's so, and, and so four stack. Yeah, understanding. It's four. The bottom car sits on the ground, and then there are three trays. It's pretty. It's pretty goddamn cool. <laughs> you gotta if come you started see it. your stuff. If a if a dude shows up, yes. without using the app or, or anything, yeah. and says, "Hey, that's my car up there. I'm going for a drive." What's the time? It's probably like, it's not that long. I mean, it's probably like four or five minutes, maybe. Like, dude, they everywhere else except my place, they run these stackers on the fly. You go to the Javits Center in Manhattan, New York City. You go to like a mall in a in a high density place. They they yep. run these things on the fly. You know, you're standing there tapping your foot while they're moving cars up and down outdoors in the winter. You know, if right. you if you text me or use the app or call or whatever and say I'll be there in twenty, dude, your thing, your car will be ready to go. There's no, it's no problem. It's all good. It's all That's good. We were doing it. app <laughs> training. Uh, we were doing app oh, yeah? training and lift training yesterday, and my guys were nice. very on point. Nice. I was I was very excited. Nobody broke it, anything. It, pro- it was good. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. That's, it probably takes me 30 to get the 912 down one level. No way. Maybe 20. 30, 20 minutes? Oh, because you got to get shit out of the got, way from like underneath sh- it? There, oh, motorcycles, bikes. That's why. Fishing lines. Yeah. Talk yeah. to me about flying. Yeah. Are you still flying around? Yeah, today took some friends to Catalina. That's we should, what, we should go to Catalina. I would, I would, yes, I'll come down to you. Okay. And we can we fly That's from cool. there? Hell yeah, yeah. let's do uh, that. No, I can, I can meet, I can meet you in Santa Monica or whatever. Habibi, um, <laughs> I love this. <laughs> I was actually really curious because because I can see Catalina from from where I live, and oh, I awesome. my wife and I were just like. I wonder what's going on over there, like with COVID. Like, did did everyone who was there like? Is there no COVID in Catalina? Did they did they shut it down? And like, seriously, is there COVID on Catalina? I'm serious. Real question. Yeah, yeah. No boats allowed or anything. That. No. What What is allowed over there? I haven't been. What's the, the deal? Restaurant. Oh, the rest. Well, now it's open. You okay. Know, you have to wear masks inside, and and so where the airport Catalina is kind of an interesting place, right? Because they. They tried to turn it into like this, uh, I don't know, party town for a long time. It burned down and then they tried to do it again. It changed hands a bunch of time. Charlie Chaplin even had like an airline. He used to go out there with seaplanes. No way. Chaplin Air. Chaplin yeah, Chaplin Air. Airlines. <laughs> yeah. And know you know, that. so they did a bunch of stuff. And then at one point they chopped the top off of a mountain up on top and that's where the runway is. And uh, it's it's got a cliff on both sides, so they used to use it for, um, in World War II, they used it for uh, aircraft carrier training. But it's a super cool runway. It's 10 miles from town, but there's a restaurant up at the runway. So usually we'll just go there and grab lunch. They, you know, they were shooting Westerns out there for a long time. Yeah. And they just left the buffaloes there from when they were shooting the Westerns. So there's herds of buffaloes running around. I remember that. Yeah, it was some John Wayne movie or something. They brought, they brought a bunch yeah. of buffalo and then just left yeah. them on Catalina. See ya. Just, just <laughs> left them there, yeah. Good old <laughs> Americans. Just just yeah. fucking no concern whatsoever for for any, That'd like... Fine, look, that one, yeah, they like each other. <laughs> That's amazing. It's all good. But it's a, so, it's a really but, cool yeah. runway. Zach's got a photo up of it um, just on the top of yeah. chopping off the top of a mountain is a very accurate description of what they did there there you go yeah. so the marines got together last year and, and repaved it is it is the runway 
concrete that you're looking at now. Yeah, it says 22 on it. Yeah. It's concrete, yeah. yeah. Wait, so 10 miles yeah. from town. So what do you can you get a taxi or something into town? What do you do? Yeah, there's a Jeep. There's a Jeep that runs you back and forth if you want. I've got two two bikes in the hangar up there too. Yeah, if you get feel adventurous. That is the move. Yep. The move is to yeah. leave a leave a bike a mountain bike there yes. and or an e-bike exactly. and to do it that way. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. And then you can throw it on the bus to come back up. Oh, see, I'm about that. Dude, can we do that? That sounds like a lot yeah. of fun. Dude, it is. I'm I'm loving the you know the flying thing. I you know don't want to spend too much time on it, but it's it's been. What a do you great mean? There's a long format show. Just fucking spend time on it. What Perfect. do you mean? Let's go. Here we go. I brought a chart. Actually. <laughs> yeah. It's, um, no. But what it's like what type a, of plane are you flying? So I have a Bonanza. It's called a Bonanza F-33A. F-33A? Zach, can you give yeah. me a picture of that so I can see what we're looking at? I think there's pictures yeah. on Tanner Faust uh, on Instagram, of course. I think you've got, is it like gray and silvery colored? Yeah. So yeah. Like blue and black. Yeah, yeah, it looks good. Go down. There it is. It's a great looking livery. Ah, Did you, you buy it like that or have it painted by like Troy uh, Lee or something? I had it painted, yeah, by, well, by a, a paint shop in Corona. Sick. But, uh, yeah, no, it's been, it's been a great adventure and it, and it, You'll see when we go that Catalina's 12 minutes. It's wow. like, uh, it, but if you have like work to do, you know, we're always working in the desert, right? You go to Mojave or Inyo Kern or whatever. It's just a half hour skip and jump around to those. And it's fun too. Yeah. Because you're, you know, you're busy in the air over LA because there's a lot of metal up there flying around. So the time just kind of clicks by. I've been thinking about doing this little short form show actually I haven't really talked to too many people about it so this seems like a good time to talk about it. but the uh it, you probably like me get um asked to come drive people's cars randomly uh like hey I got the, this it's the bane of my existence <laughs> constantly constantly all the time right yes, I got this hellcat and they send you a picture with this blower hooked out of this hellcat hood or whatever so I'm going to hop in my plane and I'm just going to go drive a bunch of these freaking cars. I'm I think it sounds shoot. really fun. Just show up at these people's houses and, and, uh, yeah. And, yeah. Well, when you, that sounds yeah. fun. I think it sounds like a fun yeah. bit actually. Yeah. And I've always wanted to do, uh, like a lap around, uh, the States in the plane, do like a cross country for this. I flew was to that Nebraska gig. Oh, you weeks flew ago. to that? That's awesome. Oh, yeah. How far? Oh, yeah, so what was just, your flight path to Nebraska? You can't do that in one. No, I went to Colorado Springs and got fuel and then continued on. What was the there. overall like flight time? Uh, full flight's probably six hours. Oh, that's flying. not so bad. That's, yeah, pretty, that's all right. Is that plane air-conditioned? <laughs> I wish today it was. No. It's not? It's not. Oh, man. No. So it gets once a little you get, Honestly, once you get up in the air high enough, you don't. It, it's cool, but... Yeah. Um, I do have like this little ice box that blows cold air if you're like sitting on the taxiway for a while. Yeah. No, I'm not worried not, about the Catalina not. flight, but I was thinking about you for six hours. Like, oh man, without air conditioning, that's a long oh. six hours. You're oh, probably no, sweaty when at, you're good. No, I was on oxygen and up at like 15. I was going over the Rockies, you know, so I was way the hell up there. Oh, and you had to go oxygen mask for that? Yeah. You, yeah. You put oxygen on. First oh, that that's cool. Cool. Yeah, How you, interesting. You, you try to stay below the altitude you need it, but. Sometimes if it's windy and you want to get out of the bumps, yeah, you know, over those Rockies, it, you just got to do it. What's how high? How high can you like cruise at that? At, with It'll that go plane? to eighteen. I think uh -huh. the highest I went was like fifteen and a half or so. I remember when you but, first started flying, and you told me that your plan was to use this plane to fly around the greater Los Angeles area, so you wouldn't have to sit in traffic to get to gigs and stuff. And I was like, "This is the smartest person ever!" Like you have figured. I've gone to meetings and landed in, like what a lot of people don't know is these FBOs is what they're called, which is like the terminal for the small planes. Sure, big, big ass jets roll in there, but there's also the guys like me that have like a tractor with wings and pull on in. And a cool I'm paint take, job, don't sell yourself yeah, short, bro. <laughs> yeah, a cool paint job. I go in there, you know, this guy's ordering 6,000 pounds of fuel. I go in there, I'm like, top it off. I think it'll take four to five gallons maybe. <laughs> Can I borrow your car? And, you know, they have a car to use at these. So it's oh, called really? a crew car. Yeah, oh. for the, you know, when, you know, John Travolta's crew needs a, a they get to the hotel, they borrow a car. Or if you buy more gallons, then you get to use it. Oh, okay. So, so yeah, now you, you go to your car. So you go to, sorry, go ahead. You go to your meeting, you go to your lunch, and then you, uh, 
head out. You usually get the car for a couple hours. I mean, it's a it's a pretty sweet deal. And and does it save time with no traffic after you get the plane out and warm it up and all that stuff? Probably not. But if there's even a stitch of traffic on the highway, it's a big time saver, and it's just awesome. Well, it's got to be fun. But I, for me, the I, as someone who does not not, I tried it once. I loved it. I, my my wife got me a lesson a couple of years yes. ago. I did the ninety minute thing at a Santa Monica airport. My instructor was like nineteen, <laughs> and, right? And and I and I really enjoyed it. I had a great time. It, it was very intuitive. If you're good at driving a car, you can fly a plane, you know, basic one without much trouble. It works just like you think it does. And then, yep. and when we were done, he was like, okay, the next step is to sign up for a year of flight school. It's going to be $20,000 and you got to commit. And there's, there was nothing in between the full commit and the try it, the taste. You know what I mean? There was, there's no real kind of recreational. You got to, you got to really commit to it. But it really seemed like the, the one way I didn't understand your time saving math was don't you have to do this whole checklist thing every time you fly the plane? Or if you're using it every day, is that a little more flexible? When you're not renting a plane, you can kind of have a flow. Mm. So I, I do check everything, but I just have a flow the way I walk around the plane and I get in, I go through the exact same gauges. My headset's right where I left it. The switches are right where I left them. And I just double check that. When you get in a rental, yeah, it's a different story. I you're, suppose that's true. A rental plane is a very, very different thing. Yeah. Scares scares me to death, but <laughs> that's why the checklists are there. Yeah. You know, because yeah. you can get through everything and um and it and it works out. But it's it it's been a good deal. You're right. And it's it, the stick and rudder of it, if you can drive, the stick and rudder side of it, you get the taking the test and everything, you don't need to spend twenty grand. You can do it for ten. But the um, Santa Monica tax, <laughs> you got to pay for the, You got to pay their rent at that airport. <laughs> and that 19 year old's logging hours while he's sitting right seat with you. So he wants you to take as much time as you can. Mm. Sadly, it's part of it. But there's um, but it, it's kind of like the fourth grade. It's like if you had to take the fourth grade right now, but with one test, none of the materials hard. Yeah, it's just just a volume, the, the volume of it just for one test, you kind of have to be trained, you know, taking practice test, practice test, and then on the day hit it, and then you're, you're done. Yeah. And honestly, that's when the real learning begins when you like go face to face with a thunderstorm or, you know, that's when you really start learning the real lessons. Yeah, no shit, yeah. And also when I listened to the kid on the radio, I was like, I don't understand a fucking word this dude is saying. Like, I'm sure that's <laughs> English, but but I swear it's, <laughs> like, what, what language is this? Do they and really understand your, him at the other end of this fucking is, radio? <laughs> If you got your pilot's license in Santa Monica, you could talk on the radio anywhere in the world, just about. Really? Yep. Why yeah. is that? It's because it's so busy in the LA basin and the chatter that you had to endure, you know? Mm. Most pilots, they cut the grass in their lawn in Kansas, get a plane, take off from their yard, uh. and never talk on the radio to air traffic control. They never have to do any of that stuff. So they kind of get nervous about going to the city. But if you do it the other way around, man, it's easy. That's a good point. That's a good so point. I, lear I learned it. Yeah, I learned in John Wayne, and it's pretty busy down here. Um, but it's, yeah, it, it makes you kind of fearless to just go to San Francisco or, or wherever, you mm. know? Is the, I mean, not that you need to get specific, but is like, is the overall cost similar to like high end sports car? Or does it totally dwarf any car that you could pretty much have to, you know? Not no? that expensive. You don't have to do it for that much money. I mean, if you to get to the nuts and bolts of it, and and believe me, when I show up to work and a couple of my pilot pilot buddies are there, and somebody says that I flew to work, you're the douchebag. <laughs> There's no way around uh, that fact if you flew to work. But the the cost, it's like 150 an hour. Like oh, that's not so you? bad. That's not all right. Yeah. I got that's not bad, especially if you're if you're flying multiple people or whatever, and it's an alt. Yeah, it sounds good. That's not bad. And you're going 200 miles an hour, 14 yeah. miles of the gallon. Do you have any cars that get 14 miles of the gallon? Gallon. Um, I would say that most of my cars get better than 14 miles a gallon. The Lamborghini does not. Uh, but the actually my 911 gets, my 911 gets like 25 even on big off-road tires I've always been impressed by that 911s are very it's efficient impressive. they're very wow. efficient yeah yeah that's awesome yeah um, 
Do you have any cars that get better than 14 miles per gallon? Your Golf R. Your Golf R definitely. The does. Golf R. Yeah. I've got the I've got an Atlas um, mm. Cross Sport, which I don't know if you remember LA Auto Show last year. We announced we were going to do this Baja 1000 program with Volkswagen. Uh huh. With the Atlas car, that was the car that it was based on. We'll see if COVID has crushed that or not, but that car was a beast. Did it with Reese Millen, and so I hope that one comes back. We'll see. The Atlas um, Crossfort's got them new commercials the, yeah, I saw with that, Macaulay are, Culkin. <laughs> you see them with the Macaulay Culkin and Paul Giamatti commercials with for the Atlas Crossfort? No, he's gone. He's gone? Psh, I don't know. He's frozen. Oh, he froze. Wah, wah. Yes. They are good commercials. Back. Oh, there he is. Hey, Tanner, are you there? Wait, yeah, yeah, okay, got gotcha. you. The okay. commercials with the crossbow? <laughs> yeah, they're good. They're fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those are good. I, I did the stunt driving for those guys, which wasn't much, not very stunty. Are you Macaulay Culkin's stunt double when it comes to driving? What? Well, if he's in a Volkswagen in a commercial. <laughs> yeah. What other, wait, what other celebrities have you stunt doubled for who you look nothing like? Only the obvious ones, like Chris Hemsworth. Um, mm. In uh, in Rush? Was that Chris Hemsworth? Was no, that what we're talking about? I wish. That would have been fun. Did you do any Ford was, versus Ferrari driving? I did a lot. What yep. did you drive in, in Ford fact, versus in fact, Ferrari? I was, I was on camera for that one as Ronnie Bucknam, who finished third. I had to give like a, a nod of moderate satisfaction. How did uh, I not see end. you? Your your face is in Ford versus Ferrari as a racing yeah. driver. How yeah. the fuck I did I not see Christian you? Bill. Really? Well, if you, you, you might have blinked, is the problem. <laughs> <laughs> what were you? What were you? Were you driving a, a, a GT40 or a replica GT40? It was a GT40. GT40. A GT40. Yeah, a replica. Yeah. Did it, it have like a Subaru day. engine in it, or was it at least a V8 and at least like a Super Performance or something? The they weren't super performance. We had a couple of those, but they were um, uh, they were LS threes. Everything had an LS three in it. Oh, just for practicality's sake. Yeah, they all the cars underneath were the same. All and the cars underneath. Cars. Oh, that may, well, that actually, I mean, that makes sense, doesn't it? Yeah, there were fifteen of them, so it just makes it easier. Yeah, it's interesting They're what right. happened to those cars. There's been people, you know, there's been people who show up in them cars at Cars and Coffee. They sold them, and there's a dude who, sh yeah, uh-huh, uh, you're, yes, there are people, and they've gotten me, too. I took a picture of one and posted on Instagram, I was like, heavy hitters in the fucking room, and I was like, someone's like, Psst, that's a prop car. <laughs> they got me. <laughs> They're bad. They're bad. Dude, Modern Zach's got legs. a picture of you as Ronnie Bucknam. You know what it is? It's it's the makeup. You, I, It really doesn't look like you. You They actually... They really made it look kind of not like you with the makeup. It's interesting. Did I look like I was in the sixties. No, I, I mean like you a... just look weathered, and you you look you look ten years older and weathered, and I, maybe it's just your facial expression in this one photo, but it doesn't really look like your face. It's interesting. It's a win. It's definitely yeah. You acted, dude. You acted. <laughs> yeah, see, I'm like a chameleon. It's a. Is that what they say? Yeah, were the yeah. were the were was filming the the driving scenes for the for the movie? Um, because presumably they didn't just just hire you to do that nod. <laughs> was filming yeah. the driving scenes as fun as I think it was, or was it actually more more work and less fun and more tedious than less fu and less fun? Um, it was. I mean, it was super fun. A lot of the reason that it was a good time was because of the group of guys doing it. Mm. Um. You know, you had a lot of the people whose dads were actually in the race. So there was stories going on and as we we called ourselves deep background because we'd just be sitting there waiting for the acting to get done and then we'd go rip through kind of a thing. Yeah. And um, you notice in the movie, it's a lot of drive-bys while they're in the pits talking. There's always cars driving by. Yeah. So that was, so they took Agua Dulce Airport shut the airport down, built a three-story building along a third of the airport of the Lamar Strait. What? So they and reconstructed the entire Lamar Front Strait and pit boxes and everything on an airport runway. Stairs, artwork in the freaking suite. So sick. When wow, these guys can just burn insane. cash like that, isn't that amazing? Insane. You're like, you're like oh my incredible. God, somebody lit so much money on fire. <laughs> 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 that, that structure was up for like four or five months, I think, at least. 
And I mean, and the cars were kind of cool. They had like these water sprayers. So the shots where you see the water kind of spraying on the front, they had water sprayers on the cars. So they'd get sprayed as if there was a car in front of them. Oh, oh that's it's a clever. fake like mist on the windshield kind of thing. Yeah. But oh, heavy water. cool. I mean, yeah. And it, you saw at Cars and Coffee, they're not waterproof. So you just get <laughs> completely soaked inside. No, when you really start looking, they're, they're medium jerky. They're definitely movie prop cars when you really oh, yeah. start looking oh, yeah. at them. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's, how, that's how movies are, you know. Sometimes there's a hero car, but yeah. Yeah. And the super, the super performance cars came out every so often. And a lot of times I think they're trying to sell them to the actors. You know, they bring them by and get the actors all jazzed about them. But they were nice. They're expensive as hell. Though. Oh, yeah. I drove one of those yeah. super. I'm not a huge fan of the Daytona Cobras. I don't not because they don't do a good job building them. I just actually I don't like how they drive. Um, mm. But the GT40s are like, yeah. oh, yes, this is very. And you can get, dude, you can get left seat, right seat. You can get sill. Yeah. You can get the shifter on any fucking sill you want. Like, it's very cool. It's really yeah. <laughs> no, they, they do They do pretty good, right? especially after you spent three weeks in one of those piles that, you know, ripping back and forth. And they're throwaway cars for those guys. The super performance looked like the real freaking deal. Yeah. Know? No, they are there. They look legit. So when, okay, so let's go back to the Agua Dulce Airport. They've got this runway. They've got this Le, this Lamar pit set up. They're filming a scene. You know, something's happening in the pits, whether it's a pit stop or a conversation or whatever, and they need cars going by like it's the race. So they have you staged at the end of this runway, and they just fucking point the light at you and you just hammer down and do a flyby and repeat yeah there'd be a radio you'd, you'd know well first of all the art department okay the art department would have a number of of what hour you were in the race so they'd be like all right next up is scene 472 and we've got we're going to be in hour 22. so all the art department would line up the cars and they got to make the cars look oh, they like they've been fuck them up yeah they hours. fucking throw yeah. dirt and rocks in yep. them and shit. oh god oh, yeah. what a great gig what a great yeah, gig. Guys, so then you, guys, let's fuck these yeah. cars up a little bit. Come on. Come on. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but then they had to put them back, you know? So then it'd be like, all right, now we're in lap two. Oh, and shit. And it's like, oh, God. The what? The washing everything. You got to yeah. reshoot. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. They weren't in order. It wasn't in order. Oh, they man. The art department, department guy's like, you fucking kidding me, bro? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> two? Did he say two? Yeah. No, there's big respect for those guys. But, it, you know, you get cranking on this. Um, they, they would say, okay, this car is going to be gaining on the other one. So, you know, be about this far back or, you know, and, and the actors were involved quite a lot. Like there were a lot of cars that had rigs. They, they were sitting on a trailer or um, Robert Nagel, who was the stunt coordinator, was driving kind of like the the back half of the car and the front half uh -huh. was the actor was in there. They have a right, lot of so he'd be driving the car and the actor would be in it and kind of fake yes. also driving and do, it, do their scene. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. And then some crashes and things, and you know, there's some some effects to make the crashes work. There was this crazy rig. Oh my god, it was like a semi truck that had this CO2 launching system. Oh yeah, where they, they just loaded a car on this thing. <laughs> this dude had a full Hans device and belts because when he launched the car, he'd go from 70 to like 20 <laughs> in this truck. <laughs> and the hit was so Oh, the dude, wait, no, him. not a guy in the car. A dude, the dude driving the truck? Yeah, <laughs> the guy driving the truck. Oh my God. And he had bruises all down his shoulders and everything after doing this like four times. And they'd launch this Ferrari and you're just driving along like, all right, push the button, push the button. Like he's right here next to you and you're just waiting for this car to launch up over your head. Oh man, and, and you're thing driving like, right next to that rig? How yeah, sick is that? The thing. I can't and the, th the thing would just start floating around like a kite in the air sometimes. <laughs> This car. There's, the I've seen like the video. There's a BTS video on YouTube. I don't. We can't show it on the show, probably. But go look it up. There's a BTS video of this on YouTube, and it. I remember seeing it. It's crazy. It's on so my cool. Instagram. I put. I put that video up. I think it's so it's like, so yeah, good. It, but there's so they come up with some cool stuff, and and you know sometimes to answer your question about the fun factor. Sometimes even the small movies, like the one I doubled Chris Hemsworth was Red Dawn, mm. which was a super small movie. He had just signed to do Thor, so he's all getting crazy buff at the time. Um, but the movie itself, because it's small, is the action is like a big part of the storytelling. There's no, you know, there's not a lot of big actors to do dialogue and stuff. 
and and the acting has to not always be a huge crash. It's got to be some something exciting, but you keep going. You know? Right, right. Because um, it gets expensive when you just start wadding cars up and <laughs> blowing up buildings. So, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. yeah. You got to so make you, it look you, good, but not totally destroy the car because this chase needs to go on for three more minutes. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. And it, it, I showed up for day one of that job. It was in Detroit. And this was in Detroit, was really in kind of bad shape economically. And, and they had basically bought out these entire city blocks. And I had a route through people's neighborhoods and they had scored the trees, they had notched the fences. And you're like, okay, you're driving here and the paratroopers are gonna drop out of the sky. So you gotta go this way, crash through this fence. You know, they got a reinforced radiator on this Silverado, 84 Silverado truck with dirt tire, you know, with uh, kind of mud tires and then slide in, hit these bushes, crash through this other fence, destroy this like playground set. And, you know, so I just had these routes through people's backyards. That's awesome. Wow. That sounds amazing. That sounds like great fun. Best job. It's therapeutic. It goes <laughs> yeah. like beyond, it's fun at first. And then all of a sudden it's like, I'm, I'm finding myself right now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I am so just, just free. <laughs> I was made to just mess shit up. <laughs> And it's like, oh, I can't even tell you. I, two weeks of that, I was Gandhi. I was like so uh, freaking, <laughs> I was unbelievably like just stress-free. Yeah, breaking shit works. It does. <laughs> it really does. It does. There used to be these like advertisements for going into like racquetball courts with a bunch of plates and just throwing plates against Oh, the they wall. definitely have that. They do no, have they that. definitely have like anger rooms where you can go and break shit. Yeah, and they have rooms where you they they provide the shit and they have rooms sma uh, is it called sm uh like no smash, room. smash rooms or smash rage ground. Welcome to rage ground. LA's anger room. <laughs> I'm pretty sure Oh my I'm God! This sure website, smash rooms, or something else. Yeah, dude. No, no. This is it. Wait, oh yeah, that's yeah. That's a Jersey Shore. For, yeah. <laughs> Rage ground. Take it out on Rage us. Rage rooms. That is epic. This is just a plywood. It's just a big plywood box. It's like ten by ten, and you just go in there and break yeah. shit. <laughs> that's awesome. What a great business model. That's rad. It. That's so good. <laughs> Holy shit! Wait, here so we go. You want to go? Wait, Tanner. Me. Tanner. Guess. Yeah. The prices. Yeah. How much do you think it costs for one person to go to Rage Ground <laughs> and break? They'll prov they will provide sixteen shot glasses, eight martini glasses, and four beer tumblers for one person to 100, smash. One hundred and forty dollars. Mm, sixty bucks. It's you were you were a little high. You were a little over. How about really? the, the date night special? <laughs> Date night special. Yeah. 16 small items, six medium items, and two large items. <laughs> it's fucking great. How I love fantasy camps special? like this. What's up? <laughs> What's that? How much is the date night special? Uh, 120 Just, bucks. And that's then, amazing. Yeah, and the s scroll down, Zach. What else? How high does it go? Okay, up to eight people for 350 bucks. 50 small items. I wonder what these items are. These items are really yeah. that's see that's a that's <laughs> all right cool. It's genius. This is genius. But so some movies you do get that out of your system. So well, Tanner, maybe what we need to do is start oh, the vehicular the version oh of gosh. this. You just knock bowling pins down, blow up boxes. It is fun going through piles of boxes, right? The cardboard box piles for sure. Yeah, Bra just yeah. drive right uh, through so plate fun. glass windows. Like, yes, we could charge. <laughs> we could charge a lot of money for this. Totally. <laughs> Let the record show. As of this podcast, Tanner and I came up with this idea together. That, that's right. You could basically go back, take every fear factor driving. Yeah. Test. Yeah, and just do that for, like, stress relief. Yeah. Oh, it's fabulous. Oh, wait. B-Y-O-B. Bring your own box. So for $24.99, you can bring your own box of I don't really know what. Hopefully you can put stuff in the Hopefully box. Hopefully stuff Not goes in the box. box. I don't really know. Do you think there's people scouring, <laughs> like, garage sales for... Just for stuff to smash? Plates? Yeah, just to take to the smash room. Or not I just want to show room. up with, like... Like a like a dozen tube TVs. Just bring me all your tube TVs. Like just because those are really really satisfying. If you fucking crash amazing. one of those, yeah. Well, then you need the Smash Party package. Eight did you ever, um, dude? Have you ever driven a Sherp? You really need to. No. Do you know what they are? No. 
the the oh, sort of this? Russian uh, amphibious sort of uh, tank type vehicle. They can go I know exactly and, what you're talking. They're about. amazing. Yeah, no. You need to drive one of those because you can crush stuff with that too. You could take down like a four four inch tree just like pfft, no problem. Just knock it down. <laughs> yeah, just drive straight through it, and then you drive into an icy river, icy bog. They just came out with this new one called the Sherp N that has like a bigger cabin. It's like for fat Americans, and it has like <laughs> they have a ten by ten one. It's a cab and a trailer, but all the wheels are driven. Ten by ten. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Do you, you remember that where that tank went loose, I think, in San Diego or something? We were talking about this in Colorado. Oh, well, no. Really? The San Diego, the guy stole the tank from Pendleton. Oh, he stole it. Okay. Colorado, we were talking about the documentary the last show. It's called Tread, and the dude built his own okay. tank in the shed and went on a rampage and took the, the town down. See, but this is the problem because you just – okay, the, the tree – the box that's like a gateway crush and you start to get addicted to the crush maybe right? but if the gonna... guy who built the tank had a way to <laughs> to crush something safely and outload healthy, his rage like a healthy some sort of healthy crush where you right. have to have like people in a car yeah he didn't have to crush the bubbles. library in his town he could <laughs> exactly. have crushed anything else <laughs> if you haven't seen it yeah. yet on Netflix, watch Tread. It's the doc. It's, Tread. Okay, it's I'll real. Check it out. It's real crazy. <laughs> it's awesome. really, really off the wall. Um, what's your What's your race schedule look like uh, the, the rest of this summer and fall? Are you Are you racing? Good what's going on? Question. Maybe some off road racing. Might do some off road racing. And uh, you know, we got the Golf Eight launch coming mm. up. So uh, once travel ban kind of gets lifted. Then I'll be making my way over there for that. But uh, really, a lot of the racing is going to get pushed till early 21 for Rallycross, I think. So no schedules have been announced, but that's really the, the racing schedule there. But I'll do um, – we're making a lot of videos. Like I said, I'm probably doing this one lap thing. So if you do have a cool kick-ass car or a drag racing tractor or whatever <laughs> – Make sure you get in touch with Matt Farah. What? What? <laughs> no, no, Fuck! Just kidding. What? No, no. <laughs> no, Do you have a sign up or something? Instagram. Do you have a, you got a oh a t at Tanner no, Faust on Instagram? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Just hit me up on Instagram, and and then we're gonna just make a schedule. Probably only do ten or twelve this first lap. I think it'd be super fun. I um yeah, I th cool. I think I think you've got an idea there that is very good. I think you'd have a lot of fun doing it, and and you'd, you could really surprise the hell out of some people. I think there'd be people that'd be really really stoked if you landed that plane of yours in their little town and drove their crazy car. That'd be super fun, right? Yeah. You'd never get to go reach out and, and actually meet those people, right? So yeah. That's, and, and if we want to fly, dude, if we want to fly to Bemidji, Minnesota, we could drive a Sherp. We just have to fly there. That's it. If we fly there, we're good. I got time. <laughs> <laughs> Let's start with Catalina. See how it goes. I'm yeah. a, I'm super on board for Catalina. Bring can the we, wife too if she's into it. Can I put Can I put my e bike in the back of your plane and we can do that kind of stuff? Does it Does it fold? No. Does it fold? I do. I read Power Bikes. There's a plug right there. Jesus, folding bike that I do fly with it is epic. It's called so what's it called? Rad Power Bikes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's cool. a folding e bike. Um. So. That's a good one to fly with. Yeah. We'll stick that one in there. You can fly, and then I'll take the mountain bike. Kick ass! That sounds great. I'll That'd plug awesome. my vin my e bike. Dude, do you ride a vintage electric? Do you know these guys? I'm not, but they look gorgeous. Yeah. It goes 35 miles an hour, and wow. it goes like 70 miles, and it's insane. Uh, it's wow. like riding a MotoGP bike on the bike path. It's really, really crazy. And I'm on my second set of brake pads already because it just smokes through brake pads. Because <laughs> 90 it's pounds, like, it's crazy fast. Dude, it, I mean, when you go on the boardwalk or anything, I don't know what the rules are in Santa Monica or up there uh, near where you live. Down it's here flexible. in Newport? <laughs> oh, yeah. It's eight-year-olds on motorcycles. Yeah. That's what it is. You know what you actually yeah. see? You see, like, I don't necessarily want to call them homeless guys because that's an assumption that I don't think is necessarily true. They look like homeless guys but they own the the scooters like uh, from Dumb and Dumber. Like the little oh, yeah. I like the yeah. shit they wrote in Dumb and Dumber. But they like, I don't know, they put turbos or stroker cranks or something on them because these fucking things mob and they're loud <laughs> Yeah, they're badass. And they ride them on the bike path. They're like two strokes. And on the like, bike path. Yeah. <laughs> they ride them on the bike path. And they fly. Uh, and no one seems to stop them. So I don't know. I mean, I got a ticket for riding my damn BMX bike on the sidewalk in high school. 
Did you really? It, yeah, you never got a ticket for doing that? I got it. No, but I, I got a ticket, ticket in Santa Monica for riding my bicycle in the bike path wearing headphones. Headphones both ears. I got I was written a ticket for that. Wow. Cuz you're a menace. Cuz fucking a menace. problem. <laughs> <laughs> um That's thanks fun. for joining us tonight, dude. I really appreciate your yeah. time. It's always great talking My to you. My pleasure, man. Um, Good talking to you, too. Can I seriously hit you up about this Catalina thing? I, I'm, I'm really down. We're doing it. Oh, that's awesome. We're doing Thanks, it. man. I'm around next week. We're going to make that happen, and maybe while I'm up in Santa Monica, I can check out your shop. Come see the shop. Yeah, yeah. I'd love, yeah. I'd love to show you around. It'd be great. Amazing. Congrats, dude. I, I love the concept. I, it's uh, it's going to be amazing for you. I'm stoked. Thank you so much, dude. Thanks for the support. I really do. Yeah. And 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 of of you're you're one of a very small group of folks that once I posted that up on Instagram sent me a specific congratulatory text message, and I do appreciate it. Thank you, thank you very much. You've been in in the last yeah. ten years since I moved you to California. It. Like you were literally. One of the first people I met, I mean, with Tim um, in, uh, in, in out at the racetrack and Paul, uh, that trip is what solidified me moving to California. So you've always fucking been there. I appreciate it very much. That's rad. Um, and I, and we it. should end this show. It's going to be a little oh, bit cool. of sad, and I'm Happy sorry. Point. Thoughts and prayers right now. Tim's dad had a stroke. Two days ago, a very gnarly, gnarly stroke is in Maryland. Tim just went there. Thoughts and prayers for Tim's dad right now. Uh, we are uh, we're Absolutely. thinking about him here in California because um, Tanner's friends with him as well. Um, thanks very much for your time, dude. I appreciate it. I'll see you real soon. My pleasure, guys. That's All our right, show for the night. The snow. Uh, follow Tanner on uh, Instagram at at Tanner Faust. The Smoking Tire Podcast is powered by Shout Engine. Get your own damn podcast at ShoutEngine.com. It's easy. All you need is a microphone, connection to the internet, and ideally something to say. Good night.